What is up guys, today I wanted to quickly explain the difference between templates and meta fields and when you should use each one. I realize this can be kind of confusing because even though they're quite different features, they sometimes overlap. I'm gonna show you a very simple example where I will use both and I hope that it'll give you kind of the right mental model for you to use this on your own project. Before we begin, I just want to thank our sponsor, which is me. So I have a Gumroad store where I sell various sections and blocks that you can easily add to your own store. So rather than getting an app and paying monthly, you can actually just buy this one time. They're quite affordable and it's an easy copy and paste to add these sections to your store. So check that out on edcodes.gumroad.com. Find the link in the description also. And now let's continue with the video. So here I have some example products, they're supplements, I have one multivitamin product and I have two protein powders. Let's say that the protein powders are very special and I want to say something else about them. You know, we have a very simple product page for all of our products, but specifically for the protein powders, I actually want to add a multi-column section here and I'm going to say some cool stuff about it, like, uh, you know, packed with protein, and like the other one is gonna say like low in fat or something like that. However, going back to my supplements, I don't want this to show up on my multivitamin product because it's not relevant. So this is a perfect situation for using templates because I want to give these two products the same template, the same design of their product page. They're gonna have that additional section and this product and like maybe the rest of my products across my store are just going to have the default product template. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going into my protein product, although it doesn't matter which product page I'm on, and I click create template. I'm going to call that template protein, right? And it's going to be based on the default product template. That simply means that it's duplicating the default product template for now and then we're gonna go ahead and edit it. It's gone and redirected me back to just the first product in my Shopify store, which is a bit annoying. I can use this button here, change, to preview whatever product I want, right? But what's important to note here is that the template is not yet applied to this product. So the first thing that I really wanna do is simply add that section I won't worry about filling it out for now. I'm just going to save and then I'm going to go into the product page on Shopify through products and everything, you know, the way you usually edit a product. And I'm actually going to change the template to protein, right? You'll see this here now because we created that template. If we didn't do that, then you wouldn't see anything here. You'd only see default product. And by the way, just a quick note, if you're working on an unpublished theme right now, then you won't see this here. It's not going to work. Templates that you create in any unpublished themes um, are not going to show up in this menu. Um, but as soon as you publish those themes, then you will see them show up in this menu. This menu only shows templates from the current live theme. Okay, that's a common issue. So now that we've selected the protein template, when we go to this product, on the actual live website and we hit refresh, we'll see that it's now actually using that protein template. Whereas if we go back to our multivitamin product, we'll see that it's still using the default product template. So now you would do the same thing for your other protein product. So we have the whey concentrate protein and here we also switch it to the protein template and we save. And then we go back to supplements and actually you might not see it straight away because it takes like maybe up to 30 seconds to update. So just refresh it a few times and you should see eventually that it's using that protein template as well. So there we go. And now that you're sure that both of those products are using this template, you can go ahead, make sure that in the customizer you're on this protein template and you can, you know, fill it out with the text that you want. So I spent a couple of minutes making it look nicer and we can check our whey isolate product has it, our whey concentrate product has it, and our multivitamin product is just using the default product template. 
Next thing I want to do is add a little drop down here under the description that lists out the ingredients of each product. So let me just grab the ingredients of what is it the isolate. So we have the ingredients of the isolate here and I'll paste it in here. But this isn't what we want because this is going to show the same ingredients across both of my protein products, which isn't what I want. Uh, now I want for each product to have completely unique data. So in this case, this is when I would use a meta field. And this is kind of the reason I made this video is because I noticed that some stores just create yet another template. They like create a template specifically for this product, you know, call it like protein isolate or something like that, and then use it to put unique uh, information in here, right? But then the problem is that they have too many templates. And every time when they want to change something across all products, now they have to go into each one and change everything separately. And if you've created templates for every product, it's very hard to manage your store, especially if you have a lot of products. So that's why we use meta fields instead. Meta fields let you add a dynamic source. So let me show you how a meta field is created here on my product page at the bottom. I have these extra fields. Uh, and that's all meta fields are. So we have like the title the description, these are the standard fields, and meta fields are extra fields that I created myself. And these are fields that um, I created for other videos, other tutorials earlier, but let's just create a new one. Now we just open settings and then go to custom data, and then to products. And you'll see I've already got these meta fields created. I'm going to add a definition, this is creating a new meta field. And we're going to call it ingredients. And it's going to get a namespace and key. This is simply like an identification for it. So we've got a custom meta field dot ingredients. And for the type, we want to select the same type as where we want to output it. So you'll see that there's single line text, multi line text. And there's also rich text. So this is rich text because it's got like bold italic and all of this stuff. Single line text would be here and multi line text would be a text field like this, but without these options, right? So what we want to select in this case is rich text. And we're going to save. And as soon as we save that exit out of the settings and go back to our product page, we should see ingredients here. And so now we can go ahead and paste our ingredients for the isolate in here and save. And now I'm just going to refresh that page in the customizer. And here now we should be able to insert a dynamic source. And it's going to be our ingredients meta field that we created. And you're going to see it right here. So it's showing the correct content whey protein isolate. Now let's save that if we double check our other products. So the whey concentrate protein, it's going to be blank, because we haven't filled out the meta field for that product. So I'll quickly do that for this product as well paste the ingredients in here, and save. So now let's do our multivitamin, for example. And once again, the ingredients meta field, I'm going to paste in, you know, the ingredients of this multivitamin, save, and let's go back to the customizer, take a look at our multivitamin. And you'll notice it's still empty. Why? Well, it's because I was editing the protein template before remember, I was editing the protein template, when I added this meta field in here. This is a completely different template. So let's just insert a dynamic source here as well with our ingredients meta field. And that'll be getting pulled in right away. And so here's the end result. Here are our, our two use cases of we're using a template to tie these two products together with that, um, you know, protein uh, features section, right? And we're using meta fields to differentiate every single product with the different ingredients which are unique to each product. So that's one way to think about it. You can use templates when you want to group products together uh, with a similar type of content, a similar design. And you would use meta fields when you have different information for every single product. Another way to think about it is that templates are useful for modifying the design we were able to add a different uh, section here on pages with this template. However, meta fields are not very good for having a different design, because you'll notice that there's this problem, 
look at this. We actually still have this ingredients drop down showing up here on this leggings product, which we don't want. I mean, leggings don't have ingredients, do they? And it would be nice if we could hide that, right? If we could remove this ingredients drop down entirely, but like only on this product. But unfortunately, Metafields don't allow us to do that. All they allow us to do is insert a dynamic source into this field here. If your store really was like this, where you're selling leggings and also, you know, supplement products, then you probably want to go with a template for vitamins, a template for protein, and the default template for your other products, or, you know, a clothing template for this product, for example, which does not have the ingredients drop down. So that's the other way to think about it is that uh, templates are great for changing the design of specific pages and meta fields are only good for changing the actual content of those pages, but they can't really give you control over the layout. However, guys, there are ways to get around this using custom liquid blocks, right? Or basically using code and you can output your meta field uh, using code like this. So you go product dot meta fields dot uh, the namespace of the meta field dot the key of the meta field and that would output the actual uh, value if this product had a value in that meta field um, and this would allow you to then wrap this in like an if statement so if uh, this meta field is filled right close that if and then at the bottom here, we do end if, right? And what this is saying is that if this meta field is filled out, we're going to output this. And if it's not, then nothing happens, nothing runs. Okay. Uh, that's just a quick example, a really rough example for um, outputting a meta field conditionally. I've talked about this in other videos as well, like this one using text meta fields and videos in meta fields. I, I often use this technique, but um, yeah, you do need a little bit of code and you sometimes won't be able to do more complex things. Like if you actually, if you actually wanted it to be, I'm not sure why the page just changed, but um, if you actually wanted it to be inside of a drop down like this, it would be difficult for you to do it with custom liquid because you need to recreate the drop down or something. Just watch my other videos if you're interested in more uh, tricks like that. And that's all for today's video, guys. One last thing is that I want to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter. If you enjoyed this video, particularly if you found the last part interesting with the code example, there will be a lot more of that in my newsletter, various little tips and snippets of code. I'll also inform you when I publish any major concepts. And also I do a monthly recap of anything that happened in Shopify, right? So you'll find the link to this newsletter in the description, but it's just ed.code slash newsletter. Also, please leave a like if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye.